Okay, in this video, we're continuing our discussion of AUC Section 300 uh, for planning the audit. And in the last video, we looked at preliminary engagement uh, procedures to do. And in this one, we're going to do some planning activities. So this is an AUC Section 300.07 through 11. And we will see that uh, we discuss developing an overall audit strategy as well as an overall audit plan. And those are two different things. And we'll see uh, the different steps that go into each of those. But first, the audit um, strategy. And that is where we establish an overall um, scope, timing, and direction of the audit and development of the audit plan. So the audit strategy comes first, and from the audit strategy, we de develop the audit plan. But uh, the strategy is developed by identifying the characteristics of the engagement that define its scope. Um, we ascertain uh, reporting objectives of the engagement um, so we can plan the timing of the audit and the nature of the communications required. Um, we consider factors um, that, in our professional judgment, are significant in directing our efforts. Uh, we consider the results of preliminary engagement activities, which we discussed in the prior video. Um, and also it's gained in other engagements uh, that, that we've performed before that are related to, to this engagement or similar. And we also ascertain the nature, time, and extent of resources necessary to perform the engagement. So this audit strategy is generally um, sort of an administrative function of the engagement to see, well, uh, what, what do we need to opine on in this engagement? What reports do we need to issue? Um, what people do we need to bring into the engagement? Um, and when should when do we need to issue the audit report by? Um, who do we need to issue it to? That sort of thing. So we get an overall understanding of the uh, all the things that we need to do to uh, comply with um, the engagement that our uh, client is directing us to perform. And next, um, after we, we've uh, developed all of this strategy, uh, we can start developing our audit plan. And that's more of a plan to um, actually design our, our audit procedures and uh, to perform the operation of the engagement, so to speak. And so developing our audit plan is, is supported by some other AUC sections, for instance, AUC section 315 and AUC section 330, which we'll get to in the next video series. But in general, we need to understand the entity um, in order to assess the risk of material misstatement at different places in the audit. And after that, we need to design our uh, the nature, timing, and extent of our audit procedures. And uh, that's in AUC section 330 here. And then we also see if there are other planned or there are other audit procedures that we need to plan to do uh, in order to comply or make sure that the entity complies with generally accepted, or that we comply with generally accepted auditing standards. And so we see the difference here. It's, it's more, uh, the audit strategy is, is developing a, um, from a high level, what are our responsibilities as an auditor and uh, complying with um, our engagement letter. And uh, uh, then the audit plan um, helps to, to determine uh, what procedures to perform so that we can um, issue the audit reports and comply with the pieces of our strategy. So we've got kind of the, the forest here and then the audit plan is more of the trees. And uh, in addition, we see here that we should update and change the overall audit strategy and audit plan as necessary during the audit. So it's not a, a static plan or strategy. As we come across new information, we um, might consider changing our original plans and strategy of the audit as necessary. So we should also plan nature, timing, extent of direction of supervision of engagement team members and the review of their work as part of this, uh, let's be more of an audit plan thing. But they want to reiterate that it's important for us to supervise the engagement team members, especially on the on the part of the engagement partner, who has overall responsibility for um, the audit and supervision of, of the engagement team, as we've seen in prior videos. But we've got some uh, explanatory material here at A9 through A17. So let's go down there and take a look at those sections. Okay, we're not, now we're down in the explanatory material, and we'll first take a look at the overall audit strategy. And remember, this is the, the forest of the engagement, so making sure we understand the reports that we're supposed to issue. What uh, financial reporting framework is this going to be under? What auditing standards is this going to be under, et cetera, um, so that we can organize our engagement and organize the people that we need for the engagement. Um, so anyway, it says that the process for establishing the audit strategy um, assists us in the completion of our risk assessment procedures. And some of the, the matters that we might um, establish in our audit strategy include resources to deploy for specific audit areas. So make sure that we've got experienced team members for high risk areas or specialists in place for complex matters that, that are very specific. Um, we also want to, um, determine the amount of resources to allocate to specific audit areas. So for example, how many uh, team members do we need to send to observe the inventory at the different locations? Do we need to put some component auditors in place for uh, group audits that we manage? Or, um, and that involves uh, putting together the audit and budget and allocating uh, more hours to higher risk areas and such. So generally planning to make sure that we've got all the people in place and in the places where they need to be, and we've got the resources to, to do that. Um, we also need to determine the timing of, of uh, when we perform our procedures. So if we need to do some interim procedures, and that would be before year end is, is closed and we need to schedule that. And we need to understand the, the due dates of all of our reports and such. So we can make sure that we hit those due dates. And we also need to um, determine when 
we need to have meetings and uh, uh, briefings and debriefing meetings and when we plan to uh, meet for all that kind of stuff for the planning process and when there needs to be engagement quality control reviews so we need to schedule with the external quality control reviewer if we have one um, and generally just make sure that everyone is on board and has time uh, reserved on their schedule to to have these meetings when we uh, plan to have them and of course we uh, in the appendix they have a uh, document for considerations in establishing the overall audit strategy and that lists examples of considerations that we could use to develop our strategy and we can take a look at that uh, once we get to the end of this section so then after we've uh, developed the audit strategy using those, these steps right here that we just went through, we now um, have a basis to establish the audit plan, uh, which we, we remember is more of the trees of the engagement as opposed to the forest, which was the audit plan or the audit strategy. And we're reminded that these plans and strategies aren't, uh, um, they're not static, they're certainly dynamic and will change as the engagement goes on. And they're also not necessarily discrete or sequential processes. So if, uh, if our audit plan changes, uh, we might, or our audit strategy changes, we might have to consider changing um, the other one, uh, the audit strategy or the audit plan to match the change in the, the other. So uh, we, all, we need to make sure that these audit plan and the audit strategy are aligned at all times and that they're, we're uh, able to change them when we need to. And we're also reminded here that uh, in our communications with those charts of governance in AUC section 260, which we uh, prepared a video of uh, a couple of video series ago, um, but we're required to communicate to those charts of governance our uh, plan scope and timing of the audit and that would basically be our uh, part of our audit strategy that we've developed so we need to make sure we communicate that with those sorts of governance and for more on that we can go to EUC section 260 and the videos that apply there so now we're going into the audit plan this is uh, the trees and we see that this is a lot more detailed than the overall audit strategy uh, because it includes the nature time and extent of the audit procedures that we plan to perform and by which engagement team members and so this process is somewhat sequential we uh, certainly have to um, develop our risk assessment procedures and determine which accounts are, are more risky than the others of, of being materially misstated. And then we can develop our audit procedures to address those risks. And after we perform those audit procedures, we might determine that we need to do further audit procedures um, due to the results that we had when, once we um, analyze the evidence that we obtained. So, uh, and this is, this is certainly a circular feedback process as well, where we need to possibly keep going back to the audit plan and changing it as we, as we go along in the audit. And that's, that's specified here where it says unexpected events and changes in conditions um, or the audit evidence that we uh, analyzed after we obtained it. Uh, may tell us that we should modify our overall audit strategy and audit plan, um, and that will result in changes to our nature, time, and extent uh, for the audit procedures based on the risk assessments. And finally, remember that uh, in developing the audit plan, we're supposed to set up our planned direction, supervision, and review of the engagement team members and their work, and how closely we, we monitor uh, and supervise the engagement team members would depend on a number of factors, including the size and complexity of the entity and the areas of the audit, the assessed uh, risk and material misstatement, and the capabilities and competence of the individual engagement team members. So um, certainly if, if the entity we're auditing is, is a lot bigger and it's got complex um, accounting estimates and such, then closer supervision of the engagement team might be necessary. Um, the same goes if there's in more risky sections of the audit where there's a higher risk of material misstatement, then uh, those engagement team members might need to be supervised more closely and, and to review the, the work of those engagement team members because it's likely we might overlook um, some, some important parts. Uh, also, for more competent or capable engagement team members, uh, we might not need to supervise or review them as closely. So, uh, of course, this, uh, we use our professional judgment and, and complying with, with this part. And AUC Section 220 related to quality control uh, in our engagements uh, gives us more information on directing and supervising the engagements.